Hi, I'm Chris Frame and thanks for joining me. If you're a regular here or you've been paying attention to cruise news, you'll know that for the last year, the world's fleet of around 300 cruise ships have been laid up. But with cruising expected to resume throughout 2021, travellers are booking in record numbers, with huge excitement from thousands of people eager to get back to sea. What you might not know is that it takes about 8 to 12 weeks to restart a cruise ship and lots of work has already been completed behind the scenes to prepare the ships for the mammoth task of resuming cruising. So what will the crew need to do to prepare the cruise ships for the return of passengers? Firstly, cruise ships will start welcoming back large numbers of crew. All of the laid up cruise ships currently have a small team of officers, technical crew and essential deck crew on board. This includes bridge officers, engineers, maintenance crew, housekeeping and chefs, all under the command of a captain. As a rule of thumb, there's around 100 to 120 crew aboard the laid up cruise ships, but an operational cruise ship requires a lot more people, with some crew numbering over a thousand. As such, during the reactivation process, larger teams of galley crew, housekeeping staff and technical staff will return, as well as hospitality teams and entertainment staff. Some cruise lines have already indicated crew will be vaccinated before returning to the ships. With the International Maritime Organization deeming Merchant Navy crew as essential workers, cruise ship crew should, in theory, get earlier access to vaccines. However, given the high demand of vaccines at the moment, this is a mammoth task, and not something that all cruise lines have committed to. But at any rate, all returning crew will be required to go through COVID-19 testing processes, followed by a 7-14 to 14 day quarantine. Only then will they be allowed to return to duty on board the ship. Once back on board, the crew will have to undergo rigorous training to get up to speed with safety requirements as well as the modified COVID requirements that will be needed on board the ships. COVID protocols have changed a lot since the cruise ships went into layup in March of 2020. So the cruise lines will ensure that crew are up to speed with the new rules. Restaurant staff, for example, will be trained in the new service styles that many cruise lines have adopted, such as replacing buffets with table service. In areas of the ship where large groups congregate, such as theatres and lounges, there may also be maximum capacity rules and seating requirements that the crew will need to be aware of. All returning crew will undergo intensive safety training. This is particularly important given most crew would not have been at sea for over a year, and some will no doubt also be new to the industry. Some cruise lines will seek specialist help to ensure the thousands of returning crew are intensely trained properly before the first passengers step back on board, with training focusing on lifeboat and life raft use, as well as evacuation procedures, firefighting, health and safety. On the topic of safety, whilst the cruise ships have been laid up, they've largely remained in class. This means the cruise ships returning to service have continued to be flagged and registered as cruise ships throughout the pandemic, even though there's been no cruising. Cruise ships continue to be subject to an annual inspection by the flag state, the country where the ship is registered. If you're finding the terminology confusing, you can check out a video I did about this in the info card or the description below. These inspections ensure that the ships continue to meet the requirement for seaworthiness and safety standards. Over the past year, the cruise ship's passenger ship safety certificate would have reflected the minimum number of essential crew on board. But as each cruise ship returns to operational status, the flag state will conduct a thorough safety inspection and test the crew on their emergency procedures and COVID preparedness before issuing an updated certificate. Despite being laid up for over a year, most of the cruise ships have remained at sea. They have periodically undertaken short voyages from anchorage to anchorage and even called at ports for provisions and crew changes. This means that mechanically the cruise ships have remained switched on, so a return to service won't necessarily require lengthy or expensive dry docking or major shoreside work. The exception here is if mandatory dry docking was already scheduled, which usually takes place every four to five years and is dependent on the age of the ship and also the dry docking regime that the ship is following. So you may see some cruise ships heading to dry dock before resuming service. Regardless of the ship, on board there's much work to be done. Perhaps the most complex reactivation task involves the ship's galleys. For the past 12 months, most cruise ships have utilised only one galley, kept operational to feed the essential crew who have been living on board. But most cruise ships have multiple restaurants and thus multiple galleys. Many of these giant kitchens have been mothballed. Reactivating them is quite a complex process, which involves testing the intricate heating systems and cooking systems, as well as ensuring that all CO2 fire suppression systems are working and that ducting, ventilation and other safety devices are working as they should be. Throughout their time in layup, teams of crew have ensured that all toilets on board have been flushed and faucets opened weekly, so cabin door locks have been tested each time this process has been undertaken. But the majority of passenger public spaces, such as bars, lounges, casinos and theatres, have remained largely untouched. 
Thoroughly deep cleaned during the crew's pause, many of these passenger areas have been covered in protective plastics to preserve the carpeting, upholstery and drapery. Before passengers return, all of this plastic will need to be removed. These passenger spaces, including cabins, will then undergo further cleaning by the onboard housekeeping team to ensure the ship presents as nicely as they did prior to COVID. Other more mundane but essential tasks will also be undertaken. This includes testing the thousands of light bulbs, PowerPoints, televisions, thermostats, phone connections and passenger Wi-Fi points to ensure everything is shipshape and ready for the guests to use again. Getting the cruise ships back into service en masse involves more than just the work on board the ship itself. There'll be work to do shoreside as well, with ports needing to rehire and train staff to operate the cruise terminals, while ensuring that all these staff are adequately trained to operate in the new environment. The scale of the resumption of cruising is huge, which is why most cruise lines are taking a phased approach. But if all goes well, we should start to see more and more cruise ships returning to passenger service throughout 2021. Have you booked a cruise when the cruise ships resume passenger service? And if you have, what are you most looking forward to about being back at sea? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. If you're interested in what else has been happening during the cruising shutdown, check out my cruising and COVID playlist. And if you'd like to know more about the history of ocean liners and cruise ships, you can check out my websites or my books, which I've linked in the description below. Thanks once again for watching, and when it is safe for us to travel again, hopefully pretty soon, I hope to see you on board.